Welcome to the General's Gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Company of Heroes 2. Today we have a, uh, wow, <laughs> already insta-locking these mad dog off-meta commander picks. I love this. Uh, we're going to have Fortune playing as our Soviets who's insta-locked in that Soviet Windustry. Alright, I'm not going to let you down here, uh, machine. Panzer Grenadier Angfre. Oh. oh, damn it, I did! Uh, Angreifen. Angreifen. Look, get really, Panzer get, get really angry and then right. try it again. Alright. Panzer Grenadier Angreifen. Ah, oh, it's almost. so hard. I'm, I'm just trying to think of what, uh. what makes you mad. Yeah, as a Wehrmacht. Man, oh, I'm no, no, I, I know, I know what makes yeah. you mad. If I want to make, if I want to trigger Blake. So close your eyes, Blake. Okay. You are going to take Dragon. You have Solar Flare ready. And then your Ivan runs in and throws down the line of those fucking bushes. Angreifen! <laughs> yeah, see? It works. <laughs> Right, it works. Nice. Okay, cool. Apart okay. from your, right. your peaking, but that works. Alright. Yeah, that's actually a true story. We played League, uh, and I mean, recently, I think it was our... the anniversary thing, so I promised I'd play League with him. Yeah. Just one and, game and, and we were going to invade Dragon. We had this really good comp for it, too. Yeah. I can't remember who we were playing, but we had a good comp. And then our Ivan threw down, like, this bushes, so we blocked all of our vision, so we are like, <laughs> fuck's sake. And, we could, and then we lost the Dragon, and it was, oh, man. It was pretty triggering, uh, we'll be honest, so... Uh... What's that ability called? Hmm? What's that? Ah, uh, mm, uh, throws like down a, bushes. It's, it's you know great, I mean. it's great it's bushes. Yeah. Um. It actually works. And he says, "You said it, you said it perfectly." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just got so mentally triggered by yeah. the, uh, the the memory of that. It's just uh, yeah. Good, th good thinking machine. It really, really did work. Get angry. Uh, pronounce German. Works well. <laughs> Grenadier's gonna absolutely romp through these uh, combat engineers. Pretty quick order. If, if you want to pronounce a Russian, you'd have to just down some vodka. Right. Okay. Yeah. Fairly standard builds, but yeah, uh, love the love the early lock-ins. Fortune. Bit off meta. Soviet industry already. Locked in here. What do you think of this commander? Sorry? Of what assault is, support. Oh, assault support. I used to play assault support all the time, dude. All the time. Assault support was actually my favorite commander. It was great. And the reason for that is just like, oh no, I'm floating a thousand manpower. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but it is, it is pretty cool. I mean, the, the, the field officer is, is a really cool unit. Um, Nine pop cap, though. A little bit yeah. niche. Yeah, yeah, that's always that's always been annoying and stupid, but it is a cool unit. Um, Blitz trucks are also, you know, cool. Um, strafing run, skill, good. And I, I love frag bomb, it's good, and tiger's good, so yeah. I don't know. I, I always loved it as a commander. I, I believe we call it the, the Zis Killer Strafe. Yeah, the Zis Killer. It's, it's just yeah. so good at wiping AT guns. Mm. I just really like the, the double munition sync relative to um, Lightning War, which I suppose is the... Um, comparison commander when it comes to, to using tigers and kind of was objectively the better one with the G43s as well as the tiger and right as well, so. Yeah. I do like it. Yeah, I, I think this, this strafe is incredibly underrated. Because yeah. it does three passes. It, it, it goes in three times and it, it'll insta-pin everything. You're yeah. going to pin the entire blob. And that gives you uh, a lot of, um, of of control, really, if you can force retreats. But anyway, we are in... This match, we haven't really been talking about what's going on. It's just been conscripts and grenadiers fighting each other. Uh, pretty good map control from Panzer Grenadier Angreifen. He's got a, a mortar mixed in and MG. Nice map for the MG42. There certainly are some, I suppose, designated attack paths. We already see wire going down to. Oh, yeah, that wire is so yeah. good. It's going to actually lock down that flank completely. And. It still can go through here, but it's going to limit uh, the mobility. And that's really important. When you're versing con spam, it's all about mobility and flanking with your URA. But if you can if you can shut those paths down, and generally it's just so hard to because of the vaulting, but in this situation, there's nowhere you can vault. Um, unless you can actually walk past that. I don't know if he didn't finish that. Hopefully, he did. Mortar going to be flushing out uh, the heavy cover of the sandbags. Shot around the conscripts. Ooh. Ooh. Ugh. He just ran into that mortar shell. Yeah. Oh man, he's still there. A lot of damage here. The longer the grand stay and the engagement, the more mortar shells are going to land. We're going to see probably one more hit here. Uh, and the mortar actually decides to re reface, replace. 
MG42 still covering it. Really nice support weapon play coming in from the Grenadier Uncreated. Not angry enough. <laughs> Good conscript playing MG42. It's taken down thanks to the maximum suppression. Con's gonna get past and will force off both of these support weapons. This is a lot of infantry. We've got four cons, an engineer, and a maxim. Needs to get some medics, as he's running pretty low on health. Certainly is the time right now. You're going to have retreating squads on low health. Uh, Preemptive medics are the way to go. You don't want to be chilling in your base, waiting for your squads to heal up, as he said, especially when they are this low. Oh, this is a nasty spot for S-Mines, because you can't capture this from any other angles. Yeah, you have to capture it via the, the, the side there. Especially if we see a flamer. Okay, that's actually a very early tier 3, so I wouldn't be surprised to see the quad half track. This isn't Winter Battle's preview or anything, so... OP things all around. It's gonna allow him to rush out those repair stations even quicker, <laughs> thanks to the... <laughs> CP increase, but... Not really that important. Sweepers up as well. Do we see the preemptive medics? Well, we didn't from Fortune. It's gonna cost him map control. A lot of it. Oh man, this is a sad sight. It's just all these lows. Cause, well, Still hasn't squads. got it. Because even if you get medics now, it actually takes a while yeah. to heal up all those those models. Because you heal one at a time. Well, unless you are US with the ambulance or British with the AOE heal, you do have to heal individual models. Uh, also, he had just such a great opportunity to go for medics when he was floating you know, 300 manpower and just didn't go for them. Yeah, the, the tier 3 timing, maybe if he goes for a, a quad half track and it gets a lot of map control with it, but he's not doing that. Um, I guess his medics now. So yeah, if, if he if he didn't go that tier 3 when his medics, he'd be in a better spot, But so that's okay. It just means that he will suffer a lot of VPs. He's, he's already actually below 400. Fantastic roll of the dice from Fortune as he... Manages to get the combat engineers over as the first unit to deal with the, the S-Mine patch on the munitions that he didn't know was there, so... Oh, I think he, he may have seen them, though, because remember he had the conscripts here, which were fighting the pioneers? Oh, so he yeah, probably yeah, did he might have seen them. the edge of them. But of course, the, the sign's extending a little bit further from the patch, so... Yeah, the vision... Yeah, makes sense. I, I, I can't remember what vision is like in Co because I don't... <laughs> it's been a while since I've played it. Yeah. We, we were talking about the wrong player. This is annoying me. Come on. Yeah, you see, you see a fair bit. Yeah. We were talking in a zero hour cast earlier today that in in C and C you get so much vision compared to things like StarCraft and Company of Heroes. Ugh. Smaller is getting work done. Might even be worth the the nine pop cap. Where's that Artie Field officer at? Oh. I bet your pig ends are like eight. Oh, they're nine. Okay. Yeah, okay. It's all right. Same as the RD officer. Yeah, that is a bit of a bit of an oversight, I feel. Should be taken down. It's not that good of a squad. You, you know, we, we actually had some changes in mind to buff this, lower the pop uh, the the pop cap that it used up. But it was it was knocked back by relic. Feels bad, man. Feels bad. Actually, if you look at it, probably relative to its cost in terms of the amount of pop cap that it actually is, it's probably one of the. Like, one of the biggest, like, disparities or whatever oh, you want to call it in the game. Actually, yeah, so. unless it's something else. Like, I know the, the US officers are really bad for that. Right. Yeah, th those US officers are so bad scaling. Because not not just the, is their pop cap too much, they don't have the, the AT grenades like riflemen. They have worse veterancy bonuses, but they can perma-sprint. So overall, yeah, they're pretty bad. Fortune... For the most part, healed up and back on the, back up here on the field. T70 has arrived. They're not currently being used. Could use the fuel drops. Get him an extra tank out faster. Yeah. Could be the plan. I mean, maybe... Yeah, okay. So it's going to be... I reckon this is going to be double T70. Surprise T70. I oh, know, maybe not. He's going to drive out with his first one. So thinking maybe double T70 is a surprise and you look for squad wipes on retreat. But maybe we don't see that with the first T70 moving out. Pack already in the way. Panzer going to be our Wehrmacht player. Also, in the next patch, they're actually removing this map from the uh, the auto match. So I suppose this is a a final farewell, a send off to Market Gardens. 
T7 is going to cop a Faust for his troubles, but he should be able to force off some squads. Oh no, yeah, he backs away. Scared of the, the pack, which isn't yet on the field. Oh, he repaired through it. <laughs> God damn it. Cool repair. I'm so glad that Blizz being removed. Yeah. Man. It's all kinds of dumb, though. It was at one stage all kinds of necessary. Double pack, double pack shot deaths. Yeah. Never, not even once, so. Yeah. It is expensive, but being able to just cop a Faust and being like, oh well, that's fine. I pressed an ability. It doesn't matter that I got hit by a Faust. My opponent outplayed me and I made a mistake. It's fine. I kind of forgot how nuts T70s are. Well, he's even missing a lot, but yeah, they're pretty damn powerful. I don't know if he's getting the, the stairs are causing him problems here. Yeah, I don't know. Certainly could be. Good was our victory points. 494 for Panzer Grenadier for FN. 305 for our Man Fortune. So running a little bit low on VPs. Uh, mainly due to the mistiming on the medics. Lost a lot of map control there and double VP controls Ooh. been in the hands of Panzer Grenadier for a long period of time. Uh oh. Gotcha. See you later. A very nice telemine. It's very deep, actually, yeah. in enemy territory. I feel like most players, they're, they're only cautious of mines when they're diving. So say you're chasing after a squad, and you go, oh, better not dive here, there might be a telemine. But when it's it's so deep, you just don't even think about it when it's, when it's that far in. Unless you've seen a pyro squad nearby. Oh, there's... Oh, no, never mind. This was finding a nice line. Interestingly, no Molotovs, despite the four conscript squads. But don't see the investment here from Fortune. Yeah, he certainly has the feel for it. Yeah. But I guess the manpower is, is limiting him. And also because he's burning all these munitions, munitions on the supply, supply drops. drops yeah. <laughs> but, but here, like that, that's exactly when you want Molotovs. Yeah. It's when you flank a machine gun and it, doesn't, it just refaces. It just ignores your conscripts. So. <laughs> <laughs> because if you had a Molotov, at least you could force it off. Yeah. Yeah. Really does matter in these kinds of engagements. It could have gone a lot differently if Molotovs were available. So. There was also a, a demo up here too. Yeah. It's really hard to take heads up engagements because the Grenadiers and that MG42, and even if you find the flanks, you, you don't really have the DPS to uh, force off an MG effectively. So the T70 is being rebuilt, and there is already a Zis gun, so if a Panzer IV shows up, not a big deal. Oh, what's Blitz this? Truck. Blitz nice. Truck. So this is actually going to be really good for the blitz truck because you can just go on that fuel point. Yeah. Because you can boost a fuel or a munis point with a cargo truck, whereas you can't do that with a fuel cache. And because the map has basically unharassable fuel, you got that one uh, boosted up, no problems. Hard to uh, to cut off, virtually impossible to decap. So. Enemy forces are capturing our supplies. Still oh, really wow. nice. VP control, pioneers, being their own little part of the luck, destroying the demo on the right hand side. MG42 positioning it hasn't hasn't been crazy, or but it has been very effective. So look at the veterancy on the support weapons: a Vet 2 mortar already, a Vet 2 MG42 already. Just done so much damage so far. It's a very good part of the map for the MG. It's very open. And the wire is still there on the side oh. of the map. You can wow. actually cut the wire with these uh, engineers or drive over it with this T70. It's actually really lucky for the for the Maxim. The, the initial burst from the MG42 didn't suppress it because they were behind heavy cover. And therefore, the Maxim got two bursts off and actually managed to suppress the MG42. So it was quite cool. Okay, Shreks are here as well. Oh, pops the repair. One Shrek hits and the Pack 40 shot misses. I think it was an attack around there looking at the range. But I'm a little bit scared for the con spam once we see the strafe used. On the other hand, this uh, the the KV2 is going to be insanely good because it'll oh, yeah. cover the two VPs. It'll cover probably both of the munitions point as well, mission points from that same location. At least his own munitions. So that's going to be very hard to dislodge. Interesting point boosting here from Panzer Grenadier. Ungrafen. He's going for the. Oh. Yeah, that's strange. Yeah, I mean, obviously very safe positioning on the truck, but we could go over to the fuel. 
Second mortar being built here by Fortune. Regular Soviet mortars, obviously the effectiveness of our Wehrmacht support weapons has been noted and Fortune going for a few of his own to try and ch change these engagements and they're not a bad move. Really at that point with the composition coming in here from Panzer Grenadier oh, weapon that he can't take. He can't just go for these ridiculous flanks anymore. The Pegrins are here. MG42 always tends to be in a, in a good position. We have tanks on the field, so fighting behind the sandbags and having mortar support is going to be a good change-up. Also, it's really nice to have your mortar behind cover because that will give you damage reduction versus other mortars, so long as they're firing from the same direction. It, it's moved now, but for a while there, he had it behind the, that's the sandbags, and that will make a big difference in those, those mortar... Those duels. I don't know if this counts. It's kind of weird because he's in cover, but it's just behind a wall. I suppose it'll count. So that's another fuel drop. Hands of four now completed. It's going to be rolling out fairly shortly. Keeping control is not bad here for Fortune, assuming he's going to just save up and go straight for that. KB2 just needs the CPs at this stage. Number six to go. Still having 269 VPs in the bank. Yeah, those mortars doing good work for Fortune. You also could use his T70 on recon mode to give the mortars their a sight. P4, however. No AT grenades just yet. There is that Zis gun. The current the over investment in fuel drops, there aren't many mines on the field either. It's not that Panzer Grenadier Ungrafen knows this, but I haven't seen a lot of mines placed down. Yeah, I don't think there's any. Mm. Apart from that one demo which was cleared. Okay, so the pack's been forced away. Uh, the Shreks as well getting attacked by these conscripts, but two SCGs can probably fight this, if not for the, uh, the crazy grenade. But, man, that T-70. Get out of here, boy. Absolute nonsense. So Fortune, does he go for his tier 4? Does he go for a KV-8? That is the question. Um, I don't know if that was rhetorical or not. Yeah. I, I suppose I didn't really inflect it enough no, either I was, way. I, was, I, I, feel like, I feel like it wasn't rhetorical. I feel like you were asking me a question and I'm really thinking on it because I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, KVA could work. I, I wouldn't be mad if he went for a KVA. Um, I guess the reason that I say that is it's, it's going to find some nice heads-on engagements. doesn't really run the risk of, of being flanked. It's not a map where we see that. I'm going to have a, a P4 running around the side, so kind of just run forward, tank some shots, maybe you know, force up a Grenadier squad or two, win the engagements for the conscripts, and then kind of just back off and be repaired. Yeah. So that's an that's an option, so just consistent DPS as opposed to I don't think we're gonna see any traces on retreats, especially after the fate of the first T seventy going down to the telemine, but it come out at a nice timing where there's only one Panzer IV and Panzer's gonna be a saving up for his tiger. Especially if you use the T seventy sight mode to sight where the the pack is and avoid it or just yeah. flank it even. He's got four squads of AT grenade bearing conscripts. So the Panzer IV has to be a bit careful with where it trespasses. Hey look, a mine. Yay. Hey. He may blow it up though with oh, his Panzer IV. No. Or he may actually No, yeah, he, he blew does. it up. Nice. Good play. So I think that was a bit of a misplay there that the engineer actually went in front of the sandbags. If if the engineers went south, uh, the P4 probably would have missed that shot and actually hit the mine. Would have been a big deal. Manpower has been saved up here by Fortune. I'm guessing that's where it's going to be invested. Yeah, he has a lot of it. The, the KV2 is expensive manpower wise, but he's still a fair way off it. Not the point in time to, to save up, if anything, point in time to go for a couple of caches if this game drags out. This is also where you get Molotovs, is just because, well, yeah, yeah you might as well. I mean, look at, the, look at the resources you have. There's nothing that you're getting anytime soon un unless he's going for KV-8, which doesn't look like he is at this rate, getting a second Zis gun, meaning that he won't go for his, his, uh, his tier 4. Not this early, at least. So. 
There's a recon. Yeah, look at that vision he's getting. Especially if he hits Vet 2 with it. Okay, P4 is going to get taking shot or two from the Zis. He's back in the hands of Fortune now, stalling things out on 260. It hasn't fallen far from the 269 we saw him on about five minutes ago, so... It's actually impressive. Yeah, the play is nice. It's impressive how, for Fortune how little this P4 has done, given there's only one Zis gun. But I suppose... Depends on idea, he keeps going for this middle, or even left flank. If he went for the right like he is now, the Zis gun is out of position. Faith and all his plays resting on Tiger. Still saving up for that one. Gonna have the fuel and the manpower available there. Not a lot of munitions float. Moment. Maybe cage wouldn't be a, a bad thing to put into place. Do we see the telemine finish? Or the, the mortar shells dissuade the pioneers just down oh. a little bit? Where the T70 went down. No, didn't go down. Right, so. Uh, it's quite quite smart, I thought, from has a good idea that he went for a telemine exactly where he placed the first telemine. It's just you never think about that spot again. It's like who, who puts a te another telemine on the corpse of the T70? It's not that's something you think about. The mortar shells force him to, to cancel the teller. It's also fun if you just build a telemine or, or any other mine for that matter, and then just cancel it when it gets seen. Because then your opponent is going to think, well, what if he didn't cancel it? And then he sends an engineer out and he wastes a bunch of time. Because you get a full refund, so you're not losing anything if, if you're able to cancel it and just walk away if you get spotted. There's two Zisk guns now, so this P4 has to be extra careful. Or well, maybe an AT grenade here. No, still focusing the pioneers. Two shots come out. Punchkips can still go after this one. The people are juking out hella hardcore. What is going on? It actually gets the pioneers. I think he hit a, a signal flare. He yeah. took a bit of damage there. Oh, there it is. Decent hero throw, but there's not really any follow up here. Enemy forces are neutralizing a sector. Still annoying though, especially because he lost his second yeah. pyre squad. Panzer 4 has done next to nothing this game. Yeah, six kills. He's given the Zisk gun some veterancy. Um, a second go, almost identical manpower float for our two players here. We would love to see munitions cache. Yeah, so much player. Given his commander, that, that'd be so good to have that. We see the Pigrens drop. Six con models could definitely do it. No suppression coming through. No, Ura, probably the correct play there. Pentagon here getting forced off, has to back away his support weapons. He can actually maybe get cut off here. Certainly a bit of an issue with the support weapon oriented play style is that if you do lose your front line, support weapons become next to useless and do have to be you know, kind of forced off. See the mortar backing away as well as the pack and the MG allows. Fortune to push up, retake the central VP. I feel like the, the late game really does go in favour of Fortune here with that KB2 coming out relative to the Tiger. We give such insane VP control and Fortune's unit composition having not lost any squads. It's pretty fantastic. This map is just so open that the double Zisk gun is going to put a lot of pressure on and limit the mobility of those tanks. And often... On some maps, the AT guns just aren't that effective because you, you can just flank it very easily, you can just drive up to it close range and just focus it down, but this map is so open, at least on the left side of the map, which is all, all that he needs is to hold two VPs, that these Tigers are yeah, going to have a bit of trouble here, unless he gets some nice fragmentation bombs, but this just isn't the munition float for that to work. Tiger now going to be available. So that one gets called in. Still with a decent fuel float. Fortune. So often we forgive 1k manpower float, but in this scenario, maybe. Well, but it's, it's almost it's almost double the price of the KB2, yeah. <laughs> so... 
Hey, Cages you know what we good. always say is build the tier 4 because it gives you extra yeah. CPs. And then you can go for an SU-85 if you want to, you can go for a caddy, caddy. if you want to. I'm actually getting some CPs pretty fast though. Getting a Maxim as well. Oh yeah, there we go. He's spending it, and I suppose it's going to round out the population cap as well. Doubles this gun, certainly enough HT. But now there's going to be Vet 3 LMG Grenadiers versus his conscripts. So the late game isn't there for the infantry, but I think double mortars should be enough, combined with the KV-2 especially, to keep the Grenadiers at bay. The white potential is certainly going to be there. Mortar pressure in conjunction with that KV-2. and has been a relatively low uh, squad loss game, so... When no one starts dropping squads to any degree of frequency, it's going to push them out of this game. Yeah, Tiger finally arriving. Trying to use Panzer Grenadiers versus the KV-2 is just so sad. Yeah. You walk up to it, Boom! You lose three models. Oh, okay, I'll retreat now. Sorry about that. Oh, kill him! Right. Okay. So, I mean, the pig were gonna blow up the combat engineers there, but no luck. Floating up missions for Fortune would be pretty handy as well, so he can use this disc barrage. Those fuel drops didn't really amount to much. No. That's a little bit unnecessary unless Fortune loses a KV-2 and even then he, he can still replace it almost with double the amount of fuel that he needs. So the, the point to go for a tier 4 is now. Even after the KV-2 it's uh, a great choice. Because the problem with relying on Zis guns is they can get wiped by the Panzerwerfer, by even a broom bar if that ends up happening. SU-85 does give you AT without getting bled manpower. Teller is swept and consequently blown up. Additional push here from Fortune, now bled down to 207 VPs, relative to the 391 Panzer Grenadier Ungrave. KV2 time. This tiger's going pretty deep here. Where your mind's at, bro? We have 200 points remaining. Now, the KV-2 won't have a lot of penetration versus the tiger at, at frontal arm, but it will do versus the Panzer IV. He's actually uh, sieging up his tank. Keeping that T-70 alive will be very useful now with that sight range. Not only the sight range, obviously it's going to be nice with the KV-2, it's also pressuring the 1vp slash edge of the map that the KV-2 isn't going to be covering. Yeah. It's a, it's a small sliver, but uh, something where, where the T D-70 can put pressure on and uh, risk the, the triple cap. I definitely agree, it's, it's probably its most useful role is in that recon <laughs> position to keep the KV-2 safe. He's going to hit that house. Yeah. He won't fire through that. If he believes he will. <laughs> Because he can't blow up the house, it's, it's... I don't think he can, maybe he can actually. So do we, do we see the, the tiger go for this one? It is going to be backing away, I was kind of hoping he'd go for it. Oh, Whoop. I hit fast forward by accident. Is that right. going to be anything? I, I accidentally... Uh, oh no, because it was it was the plus button. Right. And backspace is reset camera. So this is actually the frag bomb? Nice dodge though. Didn't do anything. But also, in that situation, the frag bomb may actually waste its shells, or at least the first few shells on that house. Probably the most telegraphed frag bomb in history as well, so... We Had a, gra a grenadier squad running around the, the edge of the map, past uh, two support weapons, like, I wonder what he's gonna do here. Oh, we can demo this. This yeah. bunker. Yeah, great time to go for it. Doesn't have any upgrades though, but it's still worth yeah. it. It's kind of annoying. It's always much more satisfying taking an MG bunker than it is just uh, <laughs> spending on nothing. So this KV-2 is like, all right, one down, three to go. <laughs> but these won't blow up. The other yeah. one was destructible. Yeah. You should just move this forward a little bit so you can actually hit things. There's really no downside to moving it forward. Oh, he's going to lose that engineer squad. 
going down. It's, it's really annoying when you lose a vet to Minesweeper squad. Because you're not going to get a vet to again on a sweeper. Oh, he's actually hitting things now. Jeez. He <laughs> should actually walk away from that. Insane. This is where the, the KV-2 is going to come into full effect. Uh, it's squad starting to push forward and the, the KV-2 engaging them. There we go. It's bit by bit. It's going to knock models off. Oh, that maximum will go down though. Oh, going for the pack. Nice. Is there anything suppressing this? There's a Tiger. The pack should get focused down. Even the P4 is going to be firing at this conscript. What? That would be fantastic. Yeah, it's got a bit of veterancy on it, but actually this is a bit risky now. Oh, what was oh, that? Oh, no! Whoops. It was a, it was a, it was a, an attack order, but he went for the, the capture. There we go. Oops, Fortune. He, he went for one too many attack orders. Kind of that useless micro where like, kill it back! Yeah, kill yeah, it back. yeah, 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 yeah. That's probably yeah. what it was. You don't actually have you to spam use, use that micro, but you, you think your, your conscripts have more chance of killing the pack if you right click on it 70 times, so. Yeah, it's kind of unfortunate, Oof. and that's another unfortunate happenstance for Fortune here. And drop a conscript squad as well as the combat engineers. In th this is where you get tilted. Sweep. Tier 4 is already completed here for Ungrafen. Strafe as well, going to be doing some good suppression. Swear. If we don't see some of our opal opal trucks or caches or anything here, we will be mad. 740 manpower float here. Hands of Grenadier, Ungrafen. Okay, he doesn't have vision to fire at this Grenadier squad. It's probably within range. But he's moved forward now, so he won't hit those houses. Strafe lasts for so long. It's an incredibly triggering strafe. Triple pin pass. T70, I don't know what he's doing. I guess he's just waiting for the VP, but he knows he can't go in. So does Panzer Grenadier Ungraf and does he build a composition to kill the KV2? Does he just build a composition to, 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 to try and chill on VPs away from it? Or what are you thinking? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he, he, at the moment, he can't do much because he's pop capped. Yeah. So until he actually loses something. I think what he has is fine. He just needs to be able to blow all his munitions. Yeah. Because. The frag will actually do the the stun on the KV2. Yeah. So if he if he goes in with the P4 and the Tiger, moves his tricks and his pack. Tu87 strafes the um, the area around. The, yeah. The KV2 as well, so getting suppression. Uh, sorry, getting the pin on conscript squads, so denying you know AT grenades, getting damage down to, to Zis guns and the like. And normally it's pretty easy to dodge that frag bomb on, with a vehicle. But if it's a locked down KV2, you won't have the time to do so. I think that's his best chance, is, is just float up resources, call in uh, the truck or a fuel cache, or munitions cache as you say, get that bank up, and then eventually go for a big push. He's in no rush here, he's got plenty of VPs to his name. The only real issue here is if he starts losing squads to the KV2. But well, at the moment it's fortune losing squads. Second combat engineer squad of the game going down. Fortune. Starting to run low on manpower. With that KV2, he should be able to avoid. Tiger's going in. Yeah, but there's actually a Zisk gun here, so he's gonna have to back that away. But with the KV2, when it's firing at max range, because of how, how slow the projectile travels, if you just keep moving the squad, you won't be able to hit it. Unless the unless the Soviet is manually attack grounding. Which is not likely. No. Pretty big micro investment. Like now, he should just be moving. Even, even if you just you just rally it, you shift click, so you're not actually microing it. To click in a circle. Yeah, like that. Like man, so you can't cap a point. Yeah, just make sure in your shift clicking, you don't accidentally click on the point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never recommend that. Uh, not even once should you uh, right click on a point against a KV2. Also, there's one engineer squad, so. What is up with engineers and death wishes this game? Yeah, they're just looking for vision, I think. But isn't that what the T70 is for? He's, he's on, he's on yeah. sight range now. 
And that's what he sees. Yeah, look at that. That's the pin from the straight. Nice. It's a good play. Target can now clean up those pin squads before we're going to force a retreat on the conscripts. Stopping the BP cap, possibly. Target goes in. Scared of the Zis guns and the KV2. It's a good thing this mortar is VET 3. It has the extra range, so we can fire away pretty safely without having to worry about the KV2 returning the fire. Still getting really triggered that Panzer Grenadier Ungrafen hasn't spent this manpower. On, yeah. He's got trucks and caches, there are just so many options. <laughs> <laughs> and reinforcing Panzer Grenadiers as well, I suppose. Yeah. It's also an investment you have to consider. Maxim going to be reclaimed here. Uh, we didn't see Panzer Grenadier Ungrave and destroy that one, even with the Tiger on that left VP. Just kind of left it there. I don't know if he planned on capping it in the future, or... I think they have the pop cap for it, so should have destroyed that one. He's not making use of this commander, is he? No. If, if you're not going to use these trucks, then you might as well just go lightning wall. Because mm. the lightning wall with the, the anti-tank strafe would be much better. It would, um, yeah, in this situation. Ag against sure. the KV-2 in particular. I, I like how he has the quad that should be able to shoot down the the strafe. But actually, that being said, I'm pretty sure this is super bad versus air units in the live game. We actually buffed its anti-air. Some anti-air units are insane, like the M15 is really good at versus planes, but I'm pretty sure this is actually awful. Yeah, I mean, this is this is essentially the ideal uh, situation for Panzer Grenadier Angreifen's commander, because you're in a, in a mid-game situation where you're not blowing through a lot of manpower, you're pop-capped, and you want more resources in this case, you know, and you want more resources, so you, you've got all this manpower to burn through, I mean, how much pop cap are over Blitzcrux machine? Uh, they're zero. It's yeah, they're, they're, they're the same pop cap as a Tiger race cost fuel. Right, okay, cool. Oh, there goes the pack. Mm. Oh, actually, Zis Barrage, that was a very nice play. See, Fortune having a bit of a bank of fuel and make uh, munitions and making use of it. Oh, there's Tiger, what are you doing, man? Oh, he pops the Blitz, but it may not matter. Oh my god. Oh, it loses the Tiger. Jeez, well, he can get that one back again. He has mm. this float, but... Actually putting a Panzerwerfer, so does he even want to build a Tiger? Maybe not. Maybe not. Well, that was disappointing. Yeah, still. Spending a bit of that manpower now at least, so. Still has a T7. Yeah, yeah the quad's nice. Uh, yeah, it's cool, it's cool. Uh, but the, the, the P4 should be able to focus that one down. The Grenadier squad gonna have to retreat. Nice. Oh, beautiful! There's a double, double wide. wide! Jeez! Wow, that's that's a fantastic play. It's definitely worth the life of the uh, 17. So that's a, that's a very good play by Fortune. I love to see players rounding out pop cap with disposable units that you can throw away like that. Yeah, As long yeah. as you're not giving away veterans here. Things like, just build a T7 and like, dive after a Grenadier squad. It's like, you might get it. Or you, um, just, you, you just trade it for like a Panzer Werfer or something yeah, like exactly, that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I, I do love that throw away pop cap at the, uh, the top end. It's very cool and, a, and an excellent way to spend uh, hugely floated resources in the case of Fortune 446 Whoa. fuel. Only five pop cap for that half track, so it's it's a very cheap way of, of trying to, well, cheap as in pop cap wise, of trying to round out your composition. Five pop cap for a quad half track, nine pop cap for the arty officer. Feels bad, man. He actually captured the fuel point. Wow. But also, there was a KV2 shell that hit before. So, the, yeah, those Grens didn't stand much of a chance. Oh, what? He almost killed that Panzerwerfer with a oh, conscript squad. Cool. Uh, what are the, the veterancy... Um, what's, the, what's the veterancy like for the KV-2? I don't really don't really remember, to be honest. That one so. is like nothing. Secure... Mo what? Yeah. Looks, yeah, it captures points. Yeah. This KV-2, what a oh, joke I that remember. is. remember, yeah, back what in the day. What a joke. A KV-2, uh, of all things. I mean, IS-2 is one thing, but like, but, yeah. but when, when does when does the KV-2 yeah. capture Maybe points? Maybe if you can lock it down and capture points, like, at the same time. Oh, yeah, you probably while, can. While, while still shooting, though, like, obviously. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. 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 Vet 2 actually matters. Uh, targeting, I think, is turret traverse and range. Oh, my yeah. God, range. Okay, and Vet 3 is mobility, mobility. so that's not really that useful. Mainly, it's just, yeah, overall, not good veterancy. The, the range is, is the main thing there. That, that'll certainly help. Um, Once we see that veteran C2, we're about halfway there from veteran C1. Trying to blow up the mortar, I think. Yeah, cool. 
to the- Oh, man! Ugh. Scumbag P4 allows the, the splash damage to, to do those Panzergren some, some serious damage. Double Faust probably won't snare this. No, I don't think so. Oh, my God! Oh. Ah. Minimum range uh, KV2 shot. He actually gets this, this attack ground. He probably has time for it. No, he doesn't go for it. There's actually a wipe there on, on the low vet squad. Oh man, oh, that's oh. T seventy. Jeez, where did the pop cap go? It is uh disappearing. It's my least favorite game. Is where did the pop cap go? I hate playing that game. <laughs> You're just like well, bad game. Everything went horribly all of a sudden, yeah. and now I have no squads left. Yeah. It's uh, disappearing faster than my hopes of beating you at video games. Wow, uh, Callum. That was self-deprecating. Yeah. Our Australian casting way, isn't it? Gotta be a little bit self deprecating. So. Can't take ourselves too seriously. Mortar still there. He's holding on. Yeah, I don't know. Guess, hey, worth, worth saving up all that manpower now, isn't it? Uh, with the tiger out on the field and. It's a good idea. Ungrave and Mulay will, will be able to run out his pop cap very quickly. So, uh, that's nice. So, the Panzerwerfer may get the wipes on the Zisk guns eventually, and if they do, then we can see some aggressive plays with those tanks. But until that happens, these Zisk guns are uh, going to be pretty scary, especially the penetration bonus at Vet 3. So few combat squads available now. Panzer Grenadier, Ungrafen. Yes. Kind of two main combat squads. You know the Grenadiers and the Panzer Grenadiers in order to cap points. Tiger's going to still take damage from this KV2. Has the emergency two now? There's the increased oh, man. range. Jesus, he might actually could even kill this. Mm. No, he's out of, out of vision. Oh wow! Oh man, almost hit that Panzer Okay, another nade. Could get it low. Yeah, this P4 is is gonna get even more damage done from taken from the uh, the KB2. Oh, but he has a nice flank. Uh, he has a flank, but but once you take any amount of HP, you just have to insta retreat because that KB2 is so good. KB2 is gonna get another shot here. Go goes to the MG. Oh. And it's firing. Yeah. The anticipation of the KB2 projectile is is pretty up there. And. This unit is actually really OP. When it covers two VPs, yeah, and like, it, it, yeah, this much, this this kind of portion of the map, it is, it's insane. It's so. map dependent, yeah. but but regardless, like it's just, it's just too good, man. Yeah. Jeez, so, the, the the rest of the commander, I think, is pretty underwhelming. There are, there are better yeah. commanders, but but this one unit generally makes up for it in in, yeah. in certain situations. You you wouldn't want to have a KV two on, um. And on a map like Arnhem Checkpoint, I, I believe we, we saw a KV2. Angoville approach. Yeah. Angoville. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, on Angoville, you, you have two VPs on the one side, so well, maybe... No, Faymanville. Faymanville. Oh, yeah. um... Yeah, yeah I suppose. Yeah. Very spread out VPs. Yeah. I mean, maybe near that bottom left fuel, you'd be able to sort yeah, of cover. Yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. Especially with the, the approach points coming from the middle of the map, but... Um, so, I mean, Panzer Grenadier, Angfreven, he's, he's saving up the munitions, so maybe he does go for a dive here. He doesn't have has enough for the J87 <laughs> frag bomb combo. He just he needs to wipe this Vengeance 2, it's insane. The, the Vengeance 2, oh my God. The, the range bonus, it's just he can't deal with this. This this KV2 needs to go down. Even if there's, there's a fresh one built, he needs to <laughs> regain the ground that he's lost. He actually is repairing it here. So if, if Panzer Grenadier, Angfreven can wipe the KV2, and reclaim the middle. It's going to be some time before Fortune <laughs> can push back out and reclaim it. As we saw, the KV2 has been slowly pushing its way into the center of the map until it's reached the ideal position. <laughs> if, if nothing else, yeah. it, it, it shouldn't have that much sure. penetration. It's, it's very hard to take my color casting seriously when you just burst into laughter <laughs> into the KV2 fire. I, I can't help it, man. Yeah, no. it, it, I know. I don't blame you. It, it's it's penetration hard. isn't amazing, but it, it should not be that good given it, everything else that it has going for it. And this Panzerwerfer is just wasting its barrage and conscripts, hoping for some wipes, which on this conscript, which just aren't happening. He needs to go for the, the, the Zisk guns. 
And now it's it's uh, a caddy. I bet you it's gonna be a dive. Look at this, a second. Oh, oh. That, that Panzer Werfer is dead. It's all kinds of dead. Surely. It's kind of thing like, do you dodge in this situation, or do you just stand still and hope it doesn't hit you? It's like, wow. Uh, Almost uh, got hit there by that one. Yeah. So Oof. yeah, with, with double pigrins with the the Shreks obviously wanting to take down a uh, an in, an immobile uh, an immobile KV2. I think we're gonna see a dive here. Okay, double Shreks, but I mean, good luck, bro. Ah, oh, okay, maybe not. Good luck. He's, he's actually turning his turret pretty quickly too, as well. Man, it's is just that T70 on recon. Yeah, it is. Ah, oh, God. It's, it's the combination as well. It's the fact the KV2 has such a ridiculous vision, thanks to the. Yeah, the T70. The better T70. <laughs> Eventually, Fortune just takes one one step further. <laughs> it's gonna get it. Oh, Finally. come on! Come on, man. Get it. Just throw the LMG. Just L LMG it, man. He nades it. Okay, whatever. Yeah. You're gonna lose that squad, though, probably. I suppose it's kind of swaggier to nade it, but. I swear if it gets out with the LMG. Wow. <laughs> it's pretty triggering. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fans of Earth goes down. Uh, hero conscript squad. Pioneers have their work cut out for them in terms of repairs here. Just a fair bit of fuel in the bank here for the Ungrafen. Does he go for a dive here? Nothing else is working. Yeah. It's, he has he has some fuel banked up. Once the, the Panzer IV is, is repaired, I don't see any reason he shouldn't go for it. Build another Panzer IV or just dive it. I guess maybe it still wouldn't be too bad. Our mines are really nice. Look at this. Yeah. Yeah. That's clever. This is really good from Fortune. He does have the frag available. There's one mine there on the road. Is he? He's gonna go on the road in the mine. Yeah, he's gonna hit the mine here. But still, he's pretty close. The KV2. Oh, did he? Does he really dodge that one? Okay, no. There's this one's firing at him too. Uh, the KV doesn't detonate the mine. Surprising. Honestly, I'm not even sure what the the tiger is doing here. Yeah, there's no frag. He's not there's fragging no yet. Follow up. The P4 isn't repaired. This is this is a little bit. A little bit early, but he's actually trading pretty well here. The KV2 isn't good in this situation. Yeah. And the Shreks are moving the, the Shreks. So... Do we see a frag bomb here? Surely we see oh, a frag wow. bomb. It's probably going to go down. Nice. He's going to hit the mine, though, in front of those disc guns. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised Fortune didn't back away. That was a big mistake. Whoa! That they was a bounced. full bounce. That was yeah. a full volley bounce from the Panzer Grenadiers, but thankfully the Tiger gets the, the finish. Uh, this gun's going to finish up the Tiger, but I mean, you can replace this one. There's the Ooh. frags as well. Will it be dodge? Maybe not. This could be a sick turnaround. That's double oh, this guns. Oh, nasty. The P4 still on the field. The Tiger can almost be rebuilt, but the KV2 is as well. Unfortunately, the moment the, the Tiger hit the mine, he should have just hit uh, Unseasoned just back away. He had yeah. two Zisk guns there. He had the mine, but he, he tried to fight that. Um, and it, yeah, it didn't go too well for him. No. But good play there by yeah. Angrafen. You could have played it better, I suppose, but I, overall worth it. Needed to kill that KV-2. Yeah, so if, if this KV-2 is revealed, it should be insta Tiger from Panzer Grenadier Angreifen and, and just go for it, because knows that this guns are down, one of them still needs to be recruited, and he's wiped one. So this is, this is the time to go for it and try and turn the game. It's all the medics. Yeah. And he still has enough munis almost uh, for the frag again, so using that would be very useful on that. KV-2, given that these Zisk guns were wiped, but actually one of them survived. I thought there was going to be a follow-up there. So he still has one of those vet free Zisk guns. The other one uh, can get recapped. Looking towards the victory points, 133 for Panzer Grenadier Angreif and Fortune down to 91 now. Okay, let's see what this P4 does. There's more mines around. What's he looking for? This is cool! What can kill this P4? What's what's a mobile anti-tank in Fortune's composition? He KVA, oh, doesn't wait. have anything. Yeah, is he looking so, for caches? Panzer, I mean, he can just... Not even that, he can just stay here and wait for the uh, flag and just go for this KV-2. Yeah, like There's now, nothing stopping him. Okay. Right. That was a nice idea there, but mm. the, the, the... Panzer Grins went in first. Yeah. If the KV-2 was firing at the P4 and then the Shrek's flanked, but... Nice mine placement from Fortune, does snag yeah. that one. But, Maybe should have yeah. attacked there with a sweeper just to scout out for that P4. It's such a weird push though, he didn't need to go in, he should have waited for the Tiger, yeah. waited for the Frag Bomb to be available, it's that's, that's a really weird decision by... Yeah. Th these pushes are just strange, he's... yeah, I don't know. Because not, not only is, is he not consolidating his forces, but he's yeah. also, he has plenty of VPs. So it's not like he, he's doing a desperation yeah. attack, he's just kind of probably bored, he's like, man, this KV-2 is making me so mad. 
Yeah, this KVA, I, I don't think he was here. expecting to find the Tiger. Maybe it's just a throwaway. Maybe he looks for... I don't think he's going to find squad wipes, though. I mean, they're, they're not as crazy as it used to be. You can't really wipe squads inside of the base. But it was as you were saying earlier, is that... You know, he's floating, he's popped caps. He doesn't lose anything, does he? He's still got the fuel. It, yeah. it, it's, it's worth the chance. Because he almost even got the med bunker. Like, yeah. if nothing else, yeah. the med bunker would have been worth it. That being said... It, oh wow, actually wipes a okay, Gren yeah, squad, nice. jeez. And the bunker too will go okay, down. Yeah, good follow up actually, good follow up. I'm down with that. Gren squad's actually really important, that is a good trade, so... Yeah, as long as you're not giving away veterans here, but it's not incredibly important at this stage of the game, especially for the Tigrets. Yeah. Yeah, vet 3 Shrek, I mean they vet up so fast, those, those Panzer Shreks. Right. Intelligent play. That's a good idea, Ungrafen. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, he could have taken that engagement. The Panther 4 goes in first, KV2 acquires it. Pigren's going, Tiger goes in, KV2 gets wiped. Frag bomb on the disc guns, forces them to move, they can't get any DPS off. That's that's all the engagement was. And especially when Panzer Grenadier Ungraf and he knew what the composition was that he was running into. I mean, we can say all this, you know, we got map hacks, but he knew what the composition was. Like this sort of thing here, where the, the KV2 turns around and, and hits the wrong squad, and then the Shreks go in. Yeah. The, the Shreks probably have the highest DPS of all AT options, but it's... Oh, Jesus, it's just... They're... They're so fragile. So if, if you can use them afterwards, like like earlier with the Tiger. The Tiger went in and, and absorbed the damage, and then the Shreks went in and, and, and unleashed a crazy volley of firepower. So if, if you can use them like that, they're, they're more powerful, but... Fortune uh, actually going for a T34 76. Good choice. Maybe even just dive the blitz truck, take it out. Yep. I wish there was a counter that said how much resources they've yeah, gained. Yeah, that would be cool. It's, same with caches too. I bet you you would see more people build fuel caches and munitions yeah. caches if it told you how much. You yeah. how much. Even with the with the repair station, how much damage it repaired. Yeah. That's kind of the. The gratification, which I think is good when RTS games have. Like, if, if you look at a mobile, like League of Legends, has damage dealt 50,000. You're like, yeah, lots of damage. Okay. Here going to make the mistake of actually running over a. Like, so they're going to be revealed. Yeah. They, uh, they have to retreat through the KV2. So this is this is the problem here. Okay, and the tiger isn't repaired yet either. So this, this is exactly as you say. Is, is he's, he's trying to go for these pushes, but but not when his tiger's right. repaired. Yep. Not when he uses his GG. his uh, his strafe. Yep. Not when he uses his next tank. It's gonna be a double wipe, and that will be the game. Yeah, LMG scored. If nothing else, we'll get it. <laughs> and there's the frag. Yeah. You can actually get the Shrek on his LMG uh, con squad. What? No, kill it! Kill the Pigrens! Wow. Ah, oh, no, there's another con squad yeah. on the backside again. Yeah, well, that, that has a Shrek. Yeah. Come on, man. Kill it! Kill it. No! Yeah. Come on, Fortune! There it is. Alright. Okay. And, yeah. <laughs> Don't double Shrek conscripts! Dude, I want to see the double Shrek conscripts. We follow my... this squad to the grave. Probably my uh, right. my my favorite squad is is Shocks with two Shreks. I love yeah. that. It's really... Hallelujah. The conscripts right. are good too. You have the, the Ura, the AT grenade. Yeah. Roomba, interesting. Now, I've never seen Zisk guns actually do so well. Oh, you can get this tiger. Oh, he actually targeted the tiger there. Nice block. Nice block. That was well played by Ungrafen. Probably wasn't intentional, mind yeah. you, but it. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> he repaired it just in time enough to get him over that threshold. Might be worth moving up this KB2. 63 VPs for Ungraf and Fortune on 88. It's probably where it'll stay. Pioneers with a little, little bit too much work to do. So overall, I think there was only one con squad going down. There was a couple engineer wipes, but overall, really good preservation. From Fortune. We are suffering vehicle losses. Yeah, I think also there was a continuous problem of Panzer Grenadier repeatedly trying to attack this section of the map where he knew the Zisk guns were. Flanking around the side here. 
um, could have worked well because even if you don't really attack much, you kind of force your opponent to attack into you. And and if you're using Zis guns and, and KV2s aggressively to try and yeah. go around a corner and start firing at a target, that, that's when they can get wiped very quickly. Yeah. It's not just the, the corner as well, it's the it's the, the kind of the cool situation of this kind of central. Just imagine this is a, as a big shot blocker, essentially. It's like, you kind of have this art covered by Zis's, and not only do I have to rotate all the way over here, they also have to get an angle on the other side of this massive shot blocker. So if you're pushing up with tanks over here, it takes so long to rotate this guns from this side of the map in a in a in a safe way where you're not being pressured by infantry or tank pressure. Any infantry or tank pressure, you really have to rotate across the entire other side of the map. So it's a, it's actually quite a cool dynamic that uh, kind of central uh, central area creates. Yeah, as so long as you have sweepers, mm -hmm. you obviously don't want to dive against good players. They will always have mines, yeah. like, like we see now. So I think we have an Ungrafen gearing up for one last push into the double this line, the double Shrek line, the KV2 line. <laughs> well, we saw that coming, didn't yeah. we? Nice Panzer, uh, Panzer Werfer strike, but look, the heavy cover actually may have saved him there from that Panzer Grenadier, uh, Panzer Werfer. The Shrek chase. If you, grenade hasn't been used. Here <laughs> we go! Hey! Right, finally gets the Molotovs. Ah, uh, good stuff, Fortune. Love your work. Big fan. Big fan. Number one fan. Ah, oh, pretty much. The enemy is down to 25 points. Well, victory is in our grasp. That's it. I think that's it. That was a good wipe. Yeah, not bad. Good stuff with Boomba. Go, Brumba, go! Brumba vs KV2, who wins? Place your bets now. <laughs> I wanna see, I wanna see that battle, it's like... Because like, you have to like dodge the KV2 shots and like the Brumba's firing and like... Uh, the, the, the KV2 jukes you out by attack grounding where it thinks you're gonna be... Yeah, it'd be it'd a be sick fun. micro battle, just Broomba yeah. vs Broomba and you yeah. have to try and yeah. you can dodge your opponent. Yeah. I guess it wouldn't really work with a Broomba because it has no turret. So say two two KV2s yeah. fighting, cause that could be then fun. you can fire yeah. while moving. Yeah. And things. Um, that'd be fun to watch. Ah oh, man. There's the frag Those we sad shells. Yeah. No, never, never to find their target. Yeah. Panzer Grenadier Ungrif and certainly could have made that better. One fantastic dive against the, the KV-2 worked out really well. Tire tank shots, brought the, the KV-2 turret around, then the Shreks went in, but... It could, it could have pulled it off later in the game as well as we saw there. Just went in with the Panzer IV and the double Shreks for no reason when he didn't have the Tiger available. I mean, the Tiger could have been called in, it could have been used in the push, and we just didn't see it. So, yeah, quite unfortunate. GG to Fortune, um, he had a nice composition to, to hold on to the middle with the, the KV-2 and this this constant recycle of kind of new units to fill out the pop cap was fantastic. I mean, he had the, see the, the M17, he got a double wipe on the on the Grenadiers, then he switched into a, a T-34 and we've seen like a, a SU-85 and a Katusha now to fill out the pop cap. So just the, the constant switch up makes it hard for Ungrafen to, to kind of uh, uh, work out a, an ideal composition. To, to counter it. Yeah, th this Duke is making me want to play Battlefield 1942. Remember, you, you could get a second person that goes on this backwards MG and yeah, you yeah, fly around yeah. shooting down other planes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, With no was... penalty for shooting your own tail, or <laughs> I, th I think you actually could blow up your oh, own tail. You? I'm okay, pretty cool. sure you could. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, if you would hit it by accident, it would just blow up very quickly. Yeah, that was an interesting game. Uh, it it kind of went the way that I thought it would, where KV2 basically just locks down this section of the map um, and I don't think Ungrafen played a particularly smart game from that point onwards. But anyway, we, we, we already explained why. So that'll wrap it up. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this company of Heroes 2 shoutcast. And, and I'm so keen because the Winter Balance preview, uh, has actually been announced 28th of March, which is probably by the time this video we posted, I suppose. So this could, this could actually be the last Co2 game that we cast, not only on this map, but without this ridiculous OPT-70 and all kinds of other nonsense. Yeah. It's cool. Certainly could freshen things up, get a few more players into the game, a few more great replays to, uh, to cast as well. So thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. It's been fun.